If you're not busy, where we at? He said it's kinda right here. I said, excuse me. He said, if I wasn't, it's coming right here. gentlemen this is one of those videos that i would listen from beginning to end and i'm being honest i'm going to start off with telling you the reason for the song that played at the beginning of this video yes there was a song that song is a true story that happened today this is an ordinary wednesday for me the busiest day of the week but i live in california and i live in an area where i told you guys we have a lot of wildflowers and they all are dead I am grateful that I borrowed my friend's riding lawnmower, and no matter how much pain I was in that week, I got out there and I mowed as much as I could for three days, and then finally returned it to him because I didn't want to hold on to it for longer than the four days I had it. <sighs> we have a no mowing after 10 a.m. Can't cut grass after 10 a.m. because of the temperatures. We've been at least 110 on average every day. Right now it's 80 degrees, so not bad, but it's seven o'clock and it's 80 degrees. It's 86 degrees inside. Wasn't able to run the air conditioning today because I wasn't here. I was outside the whole time. Why? As the song said, there was a fire outside my house today. That didn't start outside my house. I was sitting here doing some work, working on some documents for our, our clients and our staff. And so I looked in the camera and there's a camera to every angle of this property and i saw smoke and it looked like it was coming from behind <laughs> me and so i get up go outside to take a look because i'm like shouldn't it be on fire there's something back there that should be on fire swamp cooler can't be on fire i just turned it on it shouldn't be there shouldn't be no problem with no swamp cooler and i go outside and there is no fire to fire there is a fire but it's it's about five or six miles down the road. So I go, okay, no big deal. 
I, I know the fire department is going to take 45 minutes to get here because that's the routine. Fire department is 10 miles away, but on average, it takes them, pay attention, because it's hard to believe, 45 minutes to make it 10 miles. But it's okay. They got there. White smoke. Oh, yes, white smoke. But oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Got a problem. Because now the wind has started picking up. This is California. This is, <laughs> man, this valley, a whole kind of wind broke through here. I told y'all this is where the wind start. Well, the wind started blowing. Now I'm figuring, okay, oh, I hear the helicopters and I hear the planes and they're bringing in some bombers to drop some water. Okay, no problem. They got this under control. Hey, hey, they, man, this is they, they, hey, county fire. LA, you know, this is Caltrans, California fire. Man, let me tell you something. California fire, California Caltrans, transportation, man, them on top of their game. Man, I'm telling you, three hours later, the fire is out of control. The wind is blowing. Several of my neighbor's properties look like they're about to go up in smoke. I, 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 let me correct something. They did not go up in smoke. The actual fire department did save each one of the properties, including a property that literally the guy had dogs on it. He, that's all he kept on the property were dogs. He knows the firemen and all that, so they saved his properties. And then his neighbor, they saved his property. All of the abandoned properties are to the ground. Never put a drop of water on them. I thought I was going to be the only one out here because let me tell you something. They are my nearest neighbor. They're two miles away. Let, let, me, let me make sure you understand what I'm trying to explain here. This fire started six miles away from my home. It was heading away from my home. The winds turned a couple of times, but it was heading away from my home. And the winds were blowing pretty strong, but it was moving away from my home. Let me tell you something. The fire came to my corner, right to my property, to the very edge. You listen to the song. I went to the fireman. I said, hey, guys. If you're not busy, I got a question for you. He says, okay. I said, where are we at? He says, oh, it's headed here. I said, and we're, we're standing in the middle of the intersection at my property because I'm corner property. I said, excuse me? And he says, yeah, it's coming right here. I said, so I should leave. Oh, yeah, you should you should definitely leave. And I said, okay. Went and grabbed the dogs, went, got one dog, put that one in the car. When I got the other dog, they keep biting each other's leeches off their necks. So they take off their own leash so uh, our collars. So I had to take the leash and wrap it around the neck and do it as a choke chain uh, in order to get them to come to the car. And all I can tell you is that wasn't fun. So, because I haven't trained them on a leash yet, by the time I got the second one in the car, and this is just me going, putting one on a leash, picking it up, bringing it to the car, getting the other one, putting it on a leash, picking it up, bringing it to the car. By the time I did that the second time, let me tell you, hold on now, the fire was right at the corner. They didn't put any water down, they didn't dig any holes, nothing. And I said, Jehovah, are you really going to let this happen this way? And I just put my head down, put the dog in the car, got in the car, backed up about a half, uh, about a quarter of a mile from the property. The fire had already gone past that area, so it wasn't on that side. It hadn't burned anything in that direction. It was also on the other side. And I sat there, and the fire literally stopped. I'm not joking with you. I'm not kidding. The fire stopped. Went 180 feet in the, uh, well, 180 yards, not 180 feet, 180 yards in the other direction. And then jumped the road and went another five miles to the north of me and another 15 miles. There's, I think they said, uh, at when I was uh, first documenting everything, uh, calling people. They said 175 acres at that time. I know that it was way more than 175 stupid acres. 
I'm looking at it now, ladies and gentlemen. All I see is charred black ground for miles. That was my day. The fire department is still here looking for hot spots. It's been several hours since most of it has been ashes. And so they're still passing through looking to see if there are any flare-ups or anything. And so we look to be out of the woods, but I got to be vigilant because let me explain this so that you get it. It takes them, pay attention, 45 minutes. Pay attention to get here. So if something happens at night, and they're there 24 hours, something happens at night, and I don't wake up, and there's a fire, well, I'm not waking up, at least not, not in the way you think. And so guess what? I got to be up tonight. I got my cameras. My cameras are able to see at night. I'm able to see through the cameras. I'm able to see if there's any fires or anything, and so I will be paying attention. There's no wind right now. We are. I mean, there is some wind. It's about maybe five six miles an hour and it is blowing but nothing deep and there's no properties to the to all directions of me it's just let's just say I don't believe with all of my heart I don't believe that this was a fluke let's just say all right. And all I said was, Jehovah, are you really going to let this happen like this? That's it. Didn't say nothing else. Well, I, I did say something to him when I first saw it. Okay. I didn't take anything. I have a to-go bag, but it was in the car. The other car and the battery on that car was dead. So I couldn't start it. So I got in the regular car. Battery ain't dead on that one. Drive that one all the time. And I had the dogs in that car with the air conditioning on, and I backed them up, and they did all right. They sat in the car, but I knew when I came back and put them back in their dog pen because they can't be in that car like that, and I wasn't leaving. So uh, I, I had a way out. I had a way out. I had three different places, directions I could have gone to where it would not have been a problem. So I wasn't going to just stay here and let fire be all around me. Now, that would be stupid. No, I had a way out. And all I did was made sure that I was far enough away that if I needed to get away, I could get away. There's no traffic here. There's not a bunch of people. And I definitely would have headed in the direction where the fire came from, not where the fire was headed. Because it had already burned that area. So I wouldn't have been worried about that area catching fire again. I mean, when it burned it, it burned it. I mean, to the crispy. I mean, I'm looking right now, and it's black everywhere. Talk about going back to Africa. Sorry, apologize. So I just wanted to share that story with you all. Now I want to share chapter 11. 10 minutes, 30 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Chapter 11. What's so unique about chapter 11? Ladies and gentlemen, when you go into chapter 11, remember, you're getting your sole proprietorship EIN because you're doing it as a corporation, a sole proprietorship, the all caps name. So you're getting a sole proprietorship EIN for the all caps name, and you're getting a bankruptcy estate EIN from the same location because that's how you're filing your bankruptcy. And when you file your bankruptcy under the bankruptcy estate EIN, remember, you are a creditor. I haven't been telling you guys that, and I'm sorry. You are a creditor. Remember, it's the age of the majority act. You don't have access to any of your funds. You don't have access to any of your securities. You're going to list the treasury securities. You're going to list the social security trust account. You're going to list all of your accounts, people. I can't go through a list of everything that's everything, driver's license, birth certificate, all of that should be filed into the record, including any other certificates or licenses, whether it be diplomas, all of that should be added into the record. If you don't have a copy, add it in by its name, say my high school diploma, comma, by reference. Attach it to the record by reference. 
Remember, all of these accounts, your cell phone account, your light bill, your gas bill, all of these companies you've been doing business with, name all of them, all of their records, all of their files. That's your property, people. If you don't believe me, pay attention. They say, excuse me, what's your account number? Okay, bop, bop, beep, beep, bop, beep, beep, beep. Okay, what's the last four digits of your social security? Okay, bop, 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 bop. Okay, can you give me your birthday? Bop, 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 bop. Okay, uh, what is your mother's maiden name? Bop, 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 bop. Okay, one last question. What is the phone number associated with the account? Bop, 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 bop. Bop, 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 bop. Okay, thank you very much. How may I help you today in managing your account? They're custodians, people. The account belongs to you. It doesn't belong to them. That's your property. You add it all to the bankruptcy. Take control of all of your assets. 363.6 three of 31 you, I mean CFR, 31 CFR 363.6. Look at minor and minor account. And see that you must take control of all of the, all of the, pay attention, all of the securities held in your minor account. All of them. So you list all of them. Whatever you can think of in addition to what I just told you. Go into chapter 11. Ladies and gentlemen, you know that you're supposed to be doing a UCC securing all of your assets. You know that. You already have the trust. Oh, incorporate your trust as well into the bankruptcy as trust property, as estate property. Now remember, anything that's a necessary essential, you document it as a necessary essential. Remember your, your credits, your federal credits, your federal credits, your federal credits, your federal credits. You better list those as assets too. Whoo, doggy, if you don't, you're going to get hit. I mean, you're going to get really hit. So be wise, children. Now, I want to I want to show you one last thing. That, that was it. I just needed to tell you all that because if I didn't tell you tonight, as tired as I am and as it, people, were you worried? No, I kept telling people I wasn't worried. I wasn't worried. If it got burnt up, it got burnt up. What was I going to do about it? I couldn't stop it. I didn't have that power. Ladies and gentlemen, when I don't have the power to do something, then it doesn't get done. Why would I worry about it? I didn't have any authority, any power to stop what happened. The only thing I could do is do what I was supposed to do. And I've been told, I told you my father said it, the scripture said, Jehovah says it. Whenever you're in trouble, call on his name. The scriptures say his name is a strong tower and into it the righteous run. So that's where I, who can I, that's who I run to. Okay. When I need love. Okay, that's who I run to. All right, let me show you something, if you don't mind. I'm going to read something. Those of you who don't want to hear it, just stop the video now. This is Jeremiah, the second chapter, verse number 10. Jeremiah, pay attention to what Jeremiah says. But pass over the coastlands of the Kittim, and see, yes, send even to Kidar. And give special consideration and see whether anything like this has happened. Has a nation exchanged gods even for those that are not gods? But my own people have exchanged my glory for what can bring no benefit. Stay in amazement, O you heavens, at this and bristle up in great horror is the utterance of Jehovah. Because there are two bad things that my people have done. They have left even me. The source of living water. Now remember, he says he's the source of living water. Come and take life's water free. He's the source of living water. In order to hew out for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, that cannot contain water. He says, bristle up in great horror. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, what type of fool would I have been not to have asked Jehovah for his assistance this afternoon? He's the God that I trust. He's the God that I serve. 
And so I wish I could show you guys the demarcation, the line between my property and the end of the fire because it's well drawn and directly across the street from the fire where it jumped the road, how there is at least 180 yards distance where it went in the opposite direction. Bristle up. It says, be amazed. See, stare in amazement. Why? Because I keep telling people, when you're stressed out, when you're having problems, when you are faced with something and you don't know how to handle it, ask him for his help. You just have to be sincere. Use his name. I'm not saying that every single time you rub on that bottle, he gonna make your wish come true. It don't work that way. He ain't no genie. You have to quit pro quo. You will have to quit pro quo. There is give and take. But the only thing is, hey, guess what? He only asks that you have a mustard grain of faith. He doesn't ask that you have a whole bunch of it. He just says a mustard grain. Ladies and gentlemen, go and look up what a mustard grain, how big a mustard grain is. And then all you got to do is just have that much faith. You ain't got to have no more than that. The scriptures don't require you to have more than that. It does require you to build on your faith, but it doesn't require you to have more than a mustard grain of faith. Doesn't say you need to have faith the size of a mountain. He says mustard grain. So just put a little bit of trust in them. That's all, just a little bit. And it will grow as long as you rely. All right, got to go. 19 minutes.